Good morning and welcome to Read, Reflect, Respond as we move towards Easter. Today the theme of this reflection is the languages of love. It's a phrase coined by Gary Chapman, the American Christian songwriter and writer. We know that God wants us to love him and each other, but how do we express it? In what ways can we demonstrate to others and to God that we love them? I'm going to read about one of the most poignant examples of love offered by Jesus for his disciples, his friends, not long before his death. From John chapter 13, verses 1 to 5. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. In this reading, Jesus, the rabbi, the teacher, showed his love for his disciples, whom he now counted as friends, by his humility and self-sacrifice putting himself in the position of a servant to them. He took time to wash each dusty bare foot and gently dry it with a towel. And a few verses later, he told his disciples and through them us too, to do likewise. In verse 15, he says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Both self-sacrificing service and physical touch are aspects of the language of love that we see Jesus using here and that we can imitate in our relationships with each other through selflessness, with hugs when we're allowed, with humility, generosity and kindness. Giving our time to each other is also an example of love Jesus demonstrated as he patiently taught his followers and spent time in their company. Sometimes we are so busy that we forget to give time and attention to our loved ones. There's a story in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42, when Jesus visited the house of his friends Martha and Mary. Martha was very busy preparing a meal for them, yet Jesus was pleased that Mary instead of making herself busy too, took the time to sit at his feet, listening to what he taught. So can we use these languages to express our love for God as well? The season of Lent, now coming to an end, is often used as an opportunity to practice self-denial, self-sacrifice, as a devotion to God. We should always approach him with humility and a desire to serve him and spend time with him in prayer. Of course, we can't physically see or touch God, but we can be reminded of his presence in physical ways. Palm crosses at Easter, for example, celebrating the Eucharist or Holy Communion, again, when we're able. It's a way of remembering Jesus and the sacrifice he made for us as we eat and drink the bread and wine, physical representations of his body and blood. And there are naturally other ways that we can show our love for each other and for God. One important way is through praise or affirmation. We all need to hear positive things about ourselves, but we're not always so good at saying them to others. It's easy to take people we love for granted. It's easy to take God for granted too. 
Yet we only need to read some of the Psalms to hear why we should love and value God and praise his name. From Psalm 145, verses 13 to 16. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Gifts, presents, any child will tell you, are an important way of showing we love each other. Although a note of caution, having as a parent received extravagantly long Christmas lists in the past, the medieval monk Thomas a Kempis, in his book, The Imitation of Christ, wrote, A wise lover does not look at the gift of the one who loves them, but at the love of the giver. In other words, it's the thought that counts. In this, God is the supreme giver. We're about to celebrate this Easter, his gift to each of us, of the life, death, and resurrection of his own son, Jesus, sent as a message of his everlasting love. But what can we give him in return? Jesus told a parable about the day of judgment in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, where God rewards those who are generous, giving, welcoming, kind to others. He said to them, when you did this, for one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it for me. So we can give as a gift to God our love and care for each other. We can offer him our humble service and spend time with him in prayer and praise. We can look to Easter and its physical symbols reminding us of our relationship with God. The cross and Easter eggs, why not? signs of the new life God has given us. And if we do these things, we will be speaking the language of love, showing our devotion to God in the spirit that Christina Rossetti expressed so memorably in her Christmas carol. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what I can, I give him. Give my heart. So let us pray. Lord, it is impossible for us to grasp just how much you love us. But we see the proof in the life and sacrifice of your only son Jesus on the cross for our sakes. As we remember this amazing gift in the coming days of Holy Week and Easter, May our love and service, our wonder, awe and gratitude be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. May we praise your name every day and let our prayers and our time speak the language of our love for you this Easter and always. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, you commanded us to love each other as you have loved us. Help us by our love for one another and by following your example to show our love for you. Amen. Lord, you are the personification of love and yet you suffered rejection yourself. We pray for the rejected and unloved.
you remind us that the world hated you. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. You died to give us life. We pray for those who have died and ask you to bring them peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us this day, this Easter, and always. Amen. <laughs>